Hey, it's the Scotch Test Dummies. I'm Scott. Bart. We got Highland Park Cask Strength. A Cask Strength Highland Park. Woo! We're going to test it! Orkney style. Heather style, baby. That's their peak. A little bit of Heather. All right. So, yeah, this is, look at this. It's got a little bit darker so, all the way around. I'm going to say, just up front, we okay. received a sample of batch two. Nice. Highland Park cast strength. Okay. Got the sample. We had not had Highland Park cast strength, and I was down in Austin, and I saw this, so I picked it up because I had this. I was like, well, I'll just get a whole bottle of it. Got it. I didn't realize this was batch one until after I bought it. Okay. So we have a batch Ooh, one and a, spilled. and a sample of batch two. And um, I know this is stupid, but I love Highland Park. When you cork it, you give it a little twist, and it's got grooves so it seals down tight. I don't know why. I love that. Well, I know why. It seals it. <laughs> yeah, seals why it. do you like that? Yeah, I, love, I just love the detail, though, that you just give it a little twist. Pause just a second. All right, back had to uh, make a camera adjustment yeah. there. Highland Park, cast strength, batch one, and well, then we'll take a look at batch two. Yeah, would there? This, I'm, I'm curious. I mean, it's cast strength, so it hasn't been watered down. There could be variances that are going on. So, um, uncut and unfiltered. Now, I see their ad says cask to glass. So, careful how you pronounce it. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I got to watch it when I look at the cask, gla glass. Make hole. sure you pronounce it cask <laughs> to glass, not cask to glass. Right. Huh? What? What did he say? What? What is he saying? I'm gonna a uh, spoiler too. I sampled this mm. and I liked it. Mm. I was surprised. Mm. Wow, sixty-three point <sighs> three percent fruit, mm -hmm. malty. Sorry, I tasted it already. Maybe is I, the peat coming through on the really, nose? Maybe I get a little bit of an antiseptic. Which I was going to say, which is what I'll get uh, on an Isla Pete. Sometimes I'll get a heavy antiseptic. This is like a floral antiseptic. Highland Park will be lightly peated. And by that, if you check the numbers, they say it's about five parts per million. Mm. Ardbeg is 50 parts per million, mm -hmm. 50 to 55, just so you know, in that range. So it. five parts per million is very lightly peated. So what I love, though, is I love cast strength whiskey. So the sheer idea that Highland Park, which is um, something that's generally kind of more mainstream, a lot more approachable, which is good for whiskey drinkers in general, the idea that they're coming out with a cast strength gives me a little tickle. I like it. <laughs> I figured that might get you. You say mm. cast strength, I say yes. That's mm -hmm. basically the deal, so... I know. What do you got on notes? Mm. Cast strength comes through right up front, mm -hmm. but not, I mean, it's not like um, strong, overpowering punch you. I drank that, and even the other night I sat here drinking this. I drank it neat for quite a while yeah. before I added water. Yeah. Um, I get I get the sherry. There's a sherry influence with okay. some Highland Parks. It's here. It's present. It's up front. It's not a sherry bomb, but there are sherry notes that are in there. There's oak. I was going to say, I get an oak. Malt. Mm -hmm. um, I haven't got the peat yet. That could be subdued by my palate, which is still mm, hindered. Probably mine too, because I'm this crazy peat head. So when the peat is subtle, I tend to not get it. What caught me off guard is I took that first sip at 63.3. It almost caught me with the cough. The cast strength cough because I was like, ooh, that is strong, strong velvety mouthfeel. What you want, and the more the longer I've been, or, or I think you've been in in whiskey, the more you start to want higher proofs and the the velvety feelings, the oils. I get a little bit of an oil kind of velvety coating in the mouth. Hmm. Um, whoop, sp spritzed a little bit there. I like the oily when mm -hmm. you or you said oil. I thought oily. Mm -hmm. It's really oily coastal. Um, yeah, almost a little bit of moss, even. I would give you that. Yeah, it gives seaweed that seaweed or moss. Moss, moss. feel if, that's another weird one. It feels like my mouth's the rock and there's moss all over it, which is so weird. Mm -hmm. It's just this coating. 
Yeah, it needs a little, it doesn't need water. I want to do it. I could drink this neat. I want to put water in to see if it changes. So you did two strong drops, just one for, well, maybe one more. Um, this is very nice. One thing I love about a high proof or a cash strength is you can then kind of play with the dilution and see if it, you find a middle point that, that really opens up for your personal palate. 63.3%. Even though I added two pretty good sized drops of water, I doubt it brought it. I'm probably still 55 to 58% here. Mm -hmm. mm. Now, it didn't change the nose at all. But boy, did that round out the edges. It kind of had a little punch to it. Wow, and now mm -hmm. I'm getting a little more mm -hmm. vanilla honey. Mm -hmm. That's interesting. Yep. It took out the catch, which I didn't mind, and it's vanilla honey cream. Yeah. Water definitely helped it, opened it up, made the mouth feel more, even more coating, more velvety. Um, my circular breathing method with it really lit it up. Thank you. Yes. Um, still, I get a little bit of dunnage oak even, like an old oak when I do the circular breathing. Berries. Mm -hmm. Coastal. Wow. Oak. This is very good. This is what I, I, I really like. Again, the fact that they're coming out with a cast strength. You know, maybe they've done it in the past. I don't know. But No, uh, I think this. Well, maybe they've had some releases. I think this was the first. Mm non age same and so this is probably younger I, I would hazard to guess this isn't 12 probably t 8 to 10 somewhere in that range probably okay um uncut unfiltered but i don't know if it's a natural color if they've added color there's not that much in it because it's right. still pretty yeah. it's, it's a paler color that, yeah, i'm sorry to focus but yeah you can see that paleness coming through it doesn't look like it. I would ask that if you didn't add color, to go ahead and state that on there as well. You know, um, people like that. Now, the, the new initiate, they don't care. But anyone that's had it just says you don't need to add the color. Um, whiskey tasters are getting to the point where, and I used to do this when I was new, I would judge by the color. But you learn really quickly not to do that. Uh, just looking real quick, it is. It says straight from the cask to the bottle. Nice. Um, and I hmm. still nowhere does it say natural color, but yeah. So, um, boy, the flavors here are rich. Adding the water, I'm with you. Sweetened it up, gave me a little more vanilla, yet kept all these. The, the depth of these flavors where the oak comes through. I got a little touch of the peat there. I got a little bit of old dunnage and peat at the end of that. That is nice. That's the first time I've gotten that. It was in the finish, which is usually well where I will enjoy peat. The whiskey's naturally warm and golden color is driven entirely by our casks without additives. Nice. Perfect. Throw that right on the label, guys. Yeah, to read I'm it. telling you. You want to put that front and center on the label. Um, that's going to be huge for all the whiskey connoisseurs or even the whiskey um, enjoyers that are coming in. Throw that right on the front label. It does say predominantly sherry cask as well. Mm. So, which I got, I got up front. Uh, right, not overpowering, not sherry bomb by any means, but slight hints of sherry. I'm not good at picking those right, sherries right. up yet. I yeah. need to go. We still need to go buy actual sherry and and do a little thing on that. I think, or maybe I just need to do that on we my did. own. I know we did that a long time ago and it was helpful. Yeah. Um, but I would love to to reapproach it. I think they were still finished in the basement when we tried a sherry down. No, we did it 12 hours of boom with uh um Monique. Mm. She has to go pick up. Okay. Nice. At your bar. Okay, good. Your memory once again. And then you didn't like it or you didn't prefer it, so I took it and drank it. The bottle. Well, now I want more. Later. That was years ago. Um, I like this with a couple of drops of water. I added a couple more, almost too much. Still good, but I just like, I liked it in the upper fifties, I think, ABV okay. wise. So All real right. good. Let's so you bought it. this one. Okay. Yeah, we bought, we'll we bought this. this one. We bought this Patreon funds. We'll get to Patreon later. Way to help us out. Patreon crew. Um, man, I really like this. Uh, I'm going to give it a 90. That's where I'm at. 90. Okay. I yep. love this. This is really nice. I think yeah. it. I think if it was a little older, even if maybe those sherry notes were a little bit more pronounced in 91, 92, right where it's at though, 90 is my mark for good whiskey. I love it. Really well, good, or 
good Personally, whiskey. yeah, even 80% is good whiskey. There's almost, I'm thrilled because in our current time, there's almost no bad whiskey. Occasionally you'll get some bad whiskey, but it's rare. Now, I am curious, before we move on, price point. Uh, it was $80, $85. Uh, okay, I mean, that's a cast strength. I wish that was down a little bit, um, but, you know. Uh, um, look at the sure. cast strength. Sherry was thing like sure, Glenn sure. Goyne cast strength. McAllen cast strength was 90s, but Glenn Goyne a 70 to 80. It's all in, most of them are going to, and they're not non age statements. They're sure. going to be in that. Price Here's what so I will going. say though there's a lot of um, whiskey drinkers that are new that know Highland Park. Highland Park's marketing is really, really good. Their whole tie in with the Viking thing going on catches people. And, um, my only point would be they keep a good price point, which is good for whiskey initiates. Um, bring that down a little bit. That means new people to whiskey. Whiskey new shits? Initiates. Oh. <laughs> new shits. <laughs> All right. So uh, we did have the sample was sent to us by one of the, by, by high, one of the Highland Park representatives. Woo! You're cracking me up. That was good. <laughs> he caught and, me off guard. And uh, I just wanted to pick up a bottle on our own to <laughs> kind of compare it to and see. <laughs> this is the best part of the show. That's not scripted. Catches me off guard. I use the word initiate. He plays okay. with it and comes up with something else. I love it. 63.9% okay. is what I was looking for. So It's not up. on the bottle. And um, yeah, so $90 SRP standard um, retail pricing. So on the Highland Park, but now I did. I noticed out. it's on the Just box, um, release number one. So nice. uh, I, I would. And assume this is release batch. two. Yeah. Right. Got it. But I'm assuming batch two would say yep. on the box. Yep. Batch two. So again, that's not a crazy price. I'm just saying um, the folks that kind of gravitate. I've had folks that have not tried Scotch before, and then they'll tell me, "Well, I have had Highland Park," and I'm like, "Well, then you've you've had Scotch." Um, so. Uh, not, not, a uh, uh, ho ho toady way or anything. I'm just saying, yeah, that's, that's scotch and that's got a little bit of peat in it. So I've recommend for people that want to try peat or they just want something mm -hmm. with a little bit of peat. I, I recommend High Highland mm -hmm. Park a lot mm -hmm. to people for that reason. Um, I think what grabs folks, what they're really, really good at, their marketing is good. Their visual display along kind of the part of their marketing, their shelf presence is really nice. A lot of people took note when they did the Loki bottles and the Thor bottles and stuff. So, Ooh. what? Yeah. There's some different, there's some different malt, I need some different bit. barley. I would agree with you on that. No. Don't you get there. a little more vanilla? Minty. Almost okay. a minty clove as okay. well. I get a little more vanilla. Uh, I feel like I get a little more smoke off of this first batch. Again. I didn't get smoke at all yet. I'm okay. not, I didn't get it. I got it in the finish here. I got a little bit of that peat. Um, that's different. I didn't expect that much difference. I did not get the oh, yeah. the sherry blast up front on batch two. God. Not blast. Yeah. Sh let's just say sherry notes. I up do front. get the sherry note on batch one. Wow. And I was looking at the, the color in the light. I think batch two is a, maybe a shade a little bit darker than than batch one is. So I'd assume that. Maybe the sherry was stronger in it, but initially it's not. Well, here's the beauty of cast strength as well. Yeah. Cast strength, they're not looking for it to taste the same. I love that. Fans of whiskey love that. You can end up with these unicorn bottles even where you're like, mm. and with their amount, with the product that they put out, there's usually a lot of it. So, uh, We were just live with Eric's Drink Whiskey, and you brought up a wet rope, wet hemp rope. Mm-hmm. I would put that in here with this. With the batch malty, two? With batch two. More malty. Almost yeah. like a different barley strain, even, yeah. maybe. Very, uh, much more malty. Wow. Hmm. That is, did you do water? No, I have not. Go ahead. Because that really brought out some different things there. Yeah. That's interesting. This is exciting to me just because I love that they're playing around. What They're usually coming in at 43%, aren't they? I believe so. Yeah, I think yeah. their standard is 43%. And we've even talked in the past that, man, bump Ooh. that up to 46. So now that we're in the 63s, yes, yes, yes. And the nose jumped out at you a little bit more. Oh, it does. Last two with water. I almost got a little peanut brittle. The first <laughs> thing that came was peanut brittle in there. That's mm. sweet. 
corn syrup. Yep, nut. Huh. Yeah, that's a different nose. I mean, that's like, beautiful. These are not. Just like water helps batch one, a couple drops helps batch two. Helps with that mouth feel. Makes it, much, it cling so much more to your taste buds. Hangs on. It's sweeter now. <laughs> this is fun. I like what they're doing here. I mm -hmm. really do. Hmm. Yeah. Keep doing this, Highland Park. This is... Uh, now, granted, so... Well, that's, that's I like, look, we're not going to score or talk about it. Well, we've got, this was sent to us. I'll give this a 91. I'm still saying I like 90. It a, I like a, a hair better, I think, All than right. batch one. I like both of these. The strength yeah. that's coming off, um, the fact that they're slightly different, I don't know. I don't know if you gave them to me blind, if I would even peg them both as Highland Parks. They're so poppy with their strength and everything. Yeah, that's true. You could confuse me. If you sent these blind... I, I would not put these in a Highland Park, so keep doing this. You guys are, this is a good move. I think there's a lot of people that like the independent bottlings of Highland Park better than the core range yeah. Highland Park. Yeah. This would, this is almost like an independent bottler. I mean, this is natural presentation mm -hmm. from the distillery, high ABV, yeah. uncut, no color added, and delicious. All right, you guys are big producers, and I'm talking directly to Highland Park here. Um, you will blow it out of the park, pun intended, um, if you continue to do things like this. Mm -hmm. Continue the core range and keep dabbling or doing this, and holy moly, you're, you're I, I don't know what to say. You're just, the, the whiskey fans will fall back in love. If they were out of love. <laughs> yeah, more of the fruits, more of the sherry is starting to show itself now on the second batch with the water. Ooh. And a uh, little bit more malty in this, though, that's coming through with it that gives it a little bit more. Touch of sour even on this batch, right. too. Do you get it? You get a little, little bit more oak in. Yeah. Yeah, it's the sour oak touch. Nothing bad, nothing off putting. I love that these are, are you can. Well, they're distinctly different. Not saying they're totally different, but these, I thought they were going to be closer and they're not. Mm -hmm. I mean, they're not like worlds apart, but right. they are different. They are different. Yes. Um, Which you would expect. Yep. Go to scotchtestdummies.com. Nice. You can pick up coin shirts, glasses, hats, help yes. support the show. Yep. Go to Patreon. You're going to look up Scotch Test Dummies there. That is how you help us out. So, yes, they sent us this little sample, but with Patreon funds, we bought this. And so what we love to do, we will let you know when something's sent to us, whether it's by a fan. Thank you, fans. That'll get us different things on American single malts. Um, we will accept these. We'll let you know when they come in. But primarily, our Patreon fans are paying for us to try stuff. And um, we will always just be honest uh, on how we got it and what we like about it or don't. So, um, and this is a great move by them. Love it. Mm. Scotch it, you scotch gods. I had to get a little sneak snip in there. A sneak snip? Sneak snip. Solange. Sip. Dummies. Dummies. <laughs>